Hello guys, this is Al from Open Soul Channel. Welcome to a new episode. Don't forget to like and share. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a new video. Here we go, we are in Portina. Today we're going to talk about PG Admin. This is the Postgres SQL Tools. It's a client to manage your Postgres database. Very simple to use. I'm going to explain how to do it in no time using Docker and portainer don't forget all the information in the description below so without any delay let's go and start all right so we are on the documentation download page we can see your pg agent and pg admin 4 we are going to do pg admin 4 container and there are different type of distribution mac os python apt rpm source code windows so on and so forth Again, all the latest documentation also on this page. And if you need anything, it can be found here. Again, the actual code uh, is from the Docker app. And again, I'm going to add the description below. All you got to do is just really copy and paste as simple as that. There are a few times we're going to use the latest images for this installation as well. So. Without any delay, let's go to Portainer. I already got a stack um, already done anyway. Um, but what you're going to do, you can add the stack, add the name of the stack, and then in the web editor, just copy and paste the code. Then I'm going to again link in the description below. This is the actual code itself. Few things logically you need to change to make it you know, for yourself. Um, as you can see, uh, the actual name of the password, sorry, the name of the logins, the email and the password needs to be changed for your installation. Apart from that, everything should be, you know, uh, you just leave it as it is, if really, to be honest with you, unless you want to change the DB name as well, so on and so forth. As long as the images, make sure is the latest version for both PG admin and the database server Postgre. Okay, that's is important. Now the port I'm going to use um, uh, five zero eleven for PG admin and five zero ten for the actual database. Okay, but again, when we're going to connect, we're going to connect to five four three two. That is the port we're going to connect, and I'm going to show you as well. How, you know, uh, this installation will automatically do both both things. One install the pg admin and another one install the server postgre but also i'm going to do another installation after so you can see how you can actually add multiple database so without any delay once you're happy that everything is the way you want it with all the information all you got to do is to deploy the stack for my end i'm going to click update the stack here we go i'm going to click update the stack and then update again for you it's just deployment as i showed you earlier on when you create a new stack the installation doesn't really take long so it should finish in no time at all here we go the stack has been successfully deployed so once it has been done we're going to open up and what i'm going to do now i'm going to open up uh, proxy manager and I'm going to show you there is a host already done there. Again, don't forget to watch my other video on NGINX Proxy Manager on how to add proxy hosts. As you can see, it's file to gateway. I done this on purpose because I want you to see something. If I go back to containers and I go to PG admin, the installation has not been yet completed. So you need to wait a little bit longer. So if you get 502 bad gateway, don't worry. It just need more time and as you can see now it looks good and it's ready to accept connections so i go back here and as you can see automatically as reloaded to log in what you need to do if you do not remember your um, credentials that you use in the installation just go to the stack and just copy as you can see from here under the pg admin the, uh, the email and the password you use again don't forget you can actually change that and it's very important that you change from the installation if you want to as well all right so i'll press login now and we should be logged in in no time at all the first thing you want to do 
is to go to the you can add a new server but the first thing you want to do is the configuration go through the browser the settings and everything else make sure is what you really want in the settings and because that is very simple to use i'm going to go straight and i'm going to add a new server again you can add a new server here and also you can actually create a new server group that's very important if you have multiple if you manage multiple databases so to register a new server you just click on add a new server or you can right click so i'm going to give a name in this case postgre like the actual server that's been created in docker i'm going to use the server group again you can create a new group from here or just click on the server or any group that has already been created important goal is the connection now if you don't know the ip is very simple now here you find all the information how to connect by the ip if you go back to the containers or you can go down here for example at the end of the stack as you can see the the actual ip of the sql postgre is the 172 and 23.0.2 here we go let's remove the space on the front again the port is 5432 the other one is if you connect from outside docker but in this case you use the internal port again the database is as i said postgres the user is database and the actual password is password one two three four five again ensure you put a strong password this is just for demonstration tutorial and that's it i'm going to save the password i'm not going to use ssl or ssh tunnel or advanced or anything like that so i'm going to leave it as it is all right and i'm going to press save again if you're going to use ssl make sure you got the certificate loaded in here okay in this panel i'm going to click save and as you can see the actual server was added fast and it really is fast as you can see here again my sql as a database system is much much faster but again if you need something on the go something that you really need fast deploy fast in this way you can use postgre it's perfect even wordpress but you need a plugin for wordpress all right so it will not load automatically so what i'm going to do now i'm going to go back to portainer and i'm going to create a new database all right so i'm going back to the app templates i'm going to do Control f and i'm going to search for postgres sql as you can actually see here and again it doesn't matter which version of portainer which list you have again don't forget to look at the other video with the portainer lists just in case but you can find it already in the main and default pages or list again I'm, as you can see i'm going to create a new database i'm going to call it postgres 2 that will a little bit change it on the other one just to make sure um again a super user is important the password is also important again make sure you got a proper login and a proper password now for the bridge that needs to change from bridge you want to go to the pg admin database default because the network has been created in the first place if you don't do this it will not connect okay once you've done that you just go and deploy this stack as simple as that as you can see very fast and as you can see here we got the database up and running and again guys this one is quite fast it's not like the pg admin who need the installation so it will be instantaneous unless you got a really slow machine so as you can see we got the server one there postgre we're going to create postgre 2 now so that's what we're going to do we're going to register the new server again i'll go back to the connection again i'm going to change uh, back to containers and as you can see we got the new ip address and this is the one we're going to use to connect i'm going to paste it postgres i think that's where i put it there again super user as you remember for the username and the password we use password one two three four five again guys i know i'm going to repeat myself but make sure you use a strong password if you're going to use this live okay and as you can see in no time the second database was added now let's have a look a little bit inside the pg admin as you can see when you open the tab you find a lot of information 
Uh, again, don't forget from this page, you can find documentation just in case. Those are the dashboard, the property, the SQL, the statistic, dependencies and dependence. Okay. Again, here you find all the information about the statistic of each database as well. All right. Now you can find on the actual menu on top, uh, for example, you go file object tools again, here you can actually do backups as well for each server automatically done so you don't need to do a lot of you know manually all the time and everything can be done from this dashboard here you can actually manage the entire storage system again it depends how much you have allocated if you use for example proximox in this case the entire hard drive is available for this installation of pg admin again here you can import and export sql files like any other database, including the PHP my admin. Here you can find super user, for example, this is the actual main user of this database, but you can actually create as well new users. You can create a new database, you can do a lot of things, all right? And everything from this dashboard. It's a little bit more overwhelming of PHP my admin, but at the end of the day, it's extremely powerful. Here, for example, you can create the new roles, uh, the groups for each um, user, and you can create also new users as well. So guys, thank you so much indeed for joining me for this small tutorial. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did, and I'll hopefully see you next time.